It was a stylish congregation, and you could tell that they'd been around. Why, they had the biggest pipe organ of any church in that town. But over in the amen corner of the church sat Brother Ira, and every Sunday he insisted on singing in the choir. His voice was cracked and broken, and age had touched his vocal cords, and nearly every Sunday he'd get behind and miss the words. Well, the choir got so flustered that the church was told in time that Brother Ira should stop his singing, or the whole choir was going to resign. So the pastor, he appointed a committee, I think it was three or four, and they got in their big fine cars and they drove up to Ira's front door. They found the choir's great trouble sitting there in an old armchair. The summer's golden sunbeams lay upon his snow white hair. Said York, we're here, dear brother, with the best reservation, to discuss a little matter that's been affecting the congregation. It seems your voice is interfering with the choirs. So if you just lay out, are you listening, Brother Ira? The old man raised his head, a sign he did hear, and three men caught the glitter of a tear. His feeble hands pushed back his locks as white as silky snow, and he answered the committee in a voice both soft and low. I wonder if beyond the tide that's breaking at my feet, in that far off heavenly temple where my master and I shall meet, I wonder if I try to sing the songs of God up higher. Will they kick me out up there for singing in heaven's choir? A silence filled the little room and the old man bowed his head. The committee went back to town, but Brother Ira was dead. The choir missed him for a while, but he was soon forgot. A few churchgoers watched the doors, but the old man entered not. Far away his voice is sweet, and he sings his heart's desire, for there are no church committees and no fashionable choirs.